Hello everyone, this is Ray Space. From time to time, people have talked about using the Dragon spacecraft from SpaceX to land on the moon, not just make orbit around the moon, but actually land on it. And, well, that to some extent makes sense because it's one of our active spacecraft, aside from Orion, technically, though nobody's ridden on Orion, and aside from CST-100, technically, though CST-100 from Boeing has had its problems. Uh, but there's a problem with the Dragon spacecraft if you sort of use it like this. And that's that it's really heavy. Uh, we see here 8.56 tons compared to CST-100, which here comes in at 5.59 tons. So obviously that would be preferable if it worked. But um, yeah, uh, it does have the service module that has extra thrusters though, so we have to keep that in mind. But that's part of the point of the Dragon spacecraft. It's got the Super Dracos and effectively its service module here. But not only that, uh, it's got this shell around it. This is meant for re-entry. It's not meant for just carrying people. The part that carries people is this bit, which looks like that. Much smaller than the whole thing and much lighter. So this fits inside like that. So, and actually on this model that I have here of Dragon, the hatch and windows are in the wrong place because it was based on an earlier image. But yeah, the actual cabin sits inside this white shell and it really does look light gray. Here's a photo of it. That's what it actually looks like. So what we see here it's got a lot of pipes that I didn't bother to put on because that's a lot of trouble. And then it's got these brackets that uh, brace the tanks that are for the RCS and the Super Dracos and also attach to the outer structure. There's all sorts of little other brackets that attach to the outer structure as well. So there's a whole other shell that goes on top of this that's relatively heavy because it's not only protecting all these wires and pipes and such, but it's meant to keep the cabin cool from all of the thermal stuff that goes on during re-entry, which we don't need for a lander. If you take a look at the Apollo lunar module without the additional panels, this is its actual structure. And you'll notice it still has all those wires and pipes going around. And ultimately, those are what gets covered up by those really, really thin panels that look sort of papery, or uh, the MLI layers, the gold layers of foil. Uh, those are all to help with the thermal stuff and otherwise protect these things from micrometeorites or something like that. And, but this is the essential structure. All that other stuff is light compared to the heavy structure that's around Dragon because Dragon's outer structure has to deal with re-entry. So yeah, we, we just want this part first. And then we can put the additional layers on as necessary. But those are, again, fairly light. MLI layers are light, or the little panels that look really, really thin are very light, that sort of thing. So this is the essential part, and so we should get to the essential part with the Dragon spacecraft as well. So instead of having the whoop, instead of having the full thing, which is 8.56 uh, 8 tons with the supplies, though, we can have this thing, which is, uh, by my best estimate, 5.86 uh, tons with the supplies. Uh, so that loses the Super Dracos, the Super Draco fuels, and the outer shell. It might be even lighter than this. It, it is likely to be fairly conservative because if we take a look at CST-100 here, CST-100 looks like that, and that's 5.59. So, But it also doesn't have the service module equipment, which goes down here on the Dragon spacecraft. For CST-100, the service module equipment is in the service module. So uh, so all the oxygen, water, batteries, that sort of thing. Uh, for CST-100, the batteries in the water and the oxygen are in the service module, except for a little bit in the cabin. And then here in the Dragon spacecraft, they're at the bottom here. So that's different. Uh, but we have this now. And we would need a docking port. So we have to increase the mass a little bit if we're going to land on the moon. So it's important though, and that's a pretty big docking port. I think the actual ones that they have are smaller, but 
maybe the top is actually fitted to this. It's possible. Uh, but it's just the fact that people sort of depict the full Dragon spacecraft with the shell landing on the moon irritates the heck out of me. That's, <laughs> that's basically the crux of this particular video. However, there is a second piece to this. The second piece is people are also talking about using the Blue Moon Mark I lander, which is from Blue Origin, as a descent stage. Now, this is without the Dragon spacecraft, but this is what that looks like uh, without the engines and such. Uh, so before we move on, let's, let's, let's pretend we'll attach this directly for a sec, and we are going to put the Blue Moon's BE-7 engines. This is the Blue Moon Mark I, which is about 12 tons, let's say. Um, let me get... Well, once we attach the engines, we'll see. So the pod's about 6 tons. This ends up being, in total, about 20... Uh, so, about 14 tons for this. Doesn't show that right now. 6.68 .6 tons. This is actually heavier than I thought. What's making it so heavy? I guess the supply is a part of it, but... I wasn't expecting it to be that heavy, uh, but all right. Uh, it says 6.68 tons over here, and maybe that's because the kerbals are in. That's a good point. They do add mass. And then once we put this here, we see that we do not have enough to both land and take off from the moon, which means that we need another stage. Uh, so we are going to put uh, just because it's the most efficient option another BE-7 and then we're going to put the tanks where the tanks would be uh, so let's put those so where the Super Draco slash RCS tanks normally are well we'll just have normal aluminum grid tanks okay those are not big enough ah uh, Hydrolox now, there's a whole issue of Orion not being able to get to a particularly low orbit around the moon to help this out, so we'll need more Delta V than I would like, but let's say 2,100 to do the job. That's, uh, that would be great if something is in low lunar orbit, but it's not so great because Orion probably needs to be higher than that, unless we have some additional tug. So, we'll, we'll tuck those in a little bit more. So that'll be fine. And then do we get enough Delta V with this to help out? I'm going to move this up. And it's a little bit tight, especially if we're coming down from a high orbit. But if, it, if we were in a low orbit, this would be fine. If we were in a higher orbit around the moon, this is not so fine. So that is what I've got here. A lot of people have been doing a lot of spreadsheet stuff on this and you know my numbers aren't necessarily the most definitive uh, people might have better numbers but I think they're pretty good if I may say so myself I think they're pretty good so it ends up looking like this that is what the actual dragon cabin with a stage around it that's hydrolox and we'll probably have to have MLI layers on both stages as well um, it'll barely be able to land and then get back into orbit around the moon. If we use any other propellant here, it's not going to be able to do it. So we can't use hypergolics here uh, if we're using that our, as our descent stage. If we have something bigger, of course, that's different. Uh, we're looking here at 25.8 tons, which means that this can be sent to the moon using SLS directly in one launch. So that is an option, barely. But we've got the Orion problem. We also have another problem. Uh, we do need to have power generation on this. Remember, Dragon has its solar pa panels on its trunk. We don't have the trunk. So we're gonna have to sort of make these tanks with like maybe solar panels on them or something like that. So we're talking about, we really don't need that much. But uh, I, I, I can just put them on the top here or something. Anywhere will do. Solar panels are not that heavy. Either that or you have fuel cells. But, um, you know, fuel cells means you're using some of the hydrolocks. 
but you could use fuel cells. There is already probably a fuel cell on the lander stage, but we can't use that when it goes up. So that's what it looks like. It's not entirely unlike the national team lander that was proposed a while back. That was with Blue Origin plus I think Northrop and a bunch of other people. Uh, but that one didn't have a hypergolic upper stage, which meant that it had to have a lighter cabin. So either the Dragon Cabin is even lighter than this, which I would love to know if people know what the actual cabin mass is, uh, but if it's this heavy and I'm being conservative about it here, then this is getting all pretty tight. If it's much lighter, I, don't, I think I have the National Team Lantern Cabin here and we can take a look at what I had to set it to in order to make it work. It was 2.9 tons. Fairly optimistic, I think you'll agree. Uh, but that's what was necessary to have a hypergolic upper stage plus this. If we want anything more, then we need a bigger descent stage. And I think this is still what they plan for Blue Moon Mark 1, unless there's some more up-to-date information. So that's the situation and that's what I wanted to talk about. That's how it all shakes up with Dragon and the likely options for Dragon's Ascent and Descent stage if you were going to use it to land on the moon. It's not really meant for it though. It's, it's certainly not designed for it. It's not designed to have its life support running for quite that long. I mean, it depends on how long you expect them to stay on the moon. We would like them to stay on the moon a little bit longer than during Apollo, hopefully. But anyway, uh, we're, we're looking, we're, we're scrambling for options apparently here now. Not the situation we should have been in. But that is it. So that's what I wanted to talk about. I'm probably not going to use this. You can tell I, I didn't take too much time with this Dragon Cabin. It's a matter of, oh, maybe 15 minutes to make that thing. So, yeah. I don't think I'm going to use it, but if you guys push me to, I will. I've got other things to do. I have st Stubby Starship, and I have the Blue Moon Mark II hijinks to do, and especially with the new version I had made that allows you to drop things on the surface. But, you know, if people keep talking about this, it might push me to it. So, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.